Hi there, welcome to Noctis on YouTube. The Aero Speciale BAC Concorde is one of the two types of delta-winged supersonic planes that served commercial transportation routes. Concorde's only competitor was the Tupolev Tu-144, a Soviet supersonic plane that operated from 1968 to 1978. The development and construction of Concorde were carried out by two countries, the United Kingdom and France, in the 1950s. The companies responsible for designing Concorde were the Bristol Aeroplane Company from the UK and Sud Aviation from France. They produced different designs, with the UK designing a delta-winged plane for transatlantic flights with a capacity of about 100 passengers. Meanwhile, the French designed a plane for medium-range flights. Both designs were ready to start prototyping in the early 1960s, and on November 28, 1962, a project development agreement was signed. Initially, the newly established consortium intended to produce two versions, short-range and long-range planes. However, potential customers showed no interest in the short-range version, so it was cancelled, and the long-range version was retained. Other airlines that placed orders for this plane included Continental Airlines, Japan Airlines, Lufthansa, American Airlines, United Airlines, Air India, Air Canada, Singapore Airlines, Iran Air, Olympic Airways, Qantas, and many more. The ordered planes would later be named Concorde. Initially, the plane was named Concorde. But in 1967, the British government announced that it would change its name to Concorde to align with the French spelling. The construction of two prototypes began in February 1965 by companies in France and the UK. Prototype 001 was built by Aerospatiale in Toulouse, France, while Prototype 002 was built by the Bristol Aeroplane Company BAC, in Felton, Bristol, UK. After both prototypes were first tested on March 2, 1969 and April 9, 1969, they were presented to the public for the first time on June 7, 1969 at the Paris Air Show. On October 1, 1969, the Concorde supersonic plane successfully completed its maiden flight after going through various stages of improvement and ensuring the engine's strength for commercial flights. However, it's important to note that Concorde faced difficulties in its first year of sales. This was due to the construction costs of the plane increasing sixfold from the projected amount reaching $46 million in 1977. Additionally, the oil crisis in 1973 made many airlines think twice about purchasing high-fuel consumption supersonic planes. In the same year, the world-renowned plane manufacturer Boeing also introduced its latest wide-body plane, the Boeing 747. This subsonic speed plane was considered more efficient and lower risk for airlines. Consequently, many airlines chose to invest their money in the Boeing 747 rather than the Concorde. Fortunately, the Concorde's worst times did not last long. On January 21, 1976, the Concorde officially entered commercial service with its initial routes being London Bahrain and Paris Rio de Janeiro. During the first 20 years of commercial operation, Concorde transported 3.7 million passengers and accumulated over 200,000 flights hours. Between 1966 and 1979, a total of 16 Concorde planes were produced in France and the UK, with seven of them being delivered to British Airways and Air France. Concorde continued to progress and many airlines showed interest in purchasing the plane. Unfortunately, Air France's Concorde Flight 4590 experienced an accident on July 25, 2000. The plane crashed during takeoff from Charles de Gaulle Airport in Paris en route to New York and the United States of America. 
This incident resulted in 109 fatalities on board and 4 on the ground. As a result, all planes of this type were temporarily withdrawn from service. Incentive modification, repairs, and flight tests were carried out on these planes. Fortunately, they were successfully upgraded and resumed service in November 2001. Despite being upgraded and repaired, the accident raised awareness on the vulnerability of supersonic planes, including for British Airways and Air France. On April 10, 2003, both European airlines jointly announced that they would retire the Concorde at the end of the year. They cited factors such as decreased passenger interest following the July 25, 2000 accident at Charles de Gaulle Airport, the decline in air travel demand after the September 11 attacks and rising maintenance costs. Leading plane manufacturer Airbus, based in France, also decided to stop providing replacement parts for the Concorde in 2003. Although the Concorde was equipped with advanced technology in the 1970s, its analog cockpit was considered outdated in the 2000s. On May 30, 2003, Air France made its final commercial landing with the Concorde on the Paris to New York route. After its last flight, the plane was taken to Toulouse and retired on June 27, 2003. Today, some retired Concorde planes from Air France are displayed in aerospace museums in France, Germany, and the United States. Meanwhile, British Airways officially retired its Concorde fleet on October 24, 2003. However, the final flight of British Airways' Concorde G Boag took place on November 5, 2003 from JFK Airport, New York to Boeing Field, Seattle, where it joined the permanent collection at the Museum of Flight. The museum had been eyeing the Concorde for its collection since 1984. The last Concorde flight took place on November 26, 2003, flying from Heathrow Airport, London to Filton Airport, officially marking the end of the era of supersonic flight worldwide. As for Concorde specifications, it had a length of 200 feet, a wingspan of 83 feet, and a height of 39 feet. The plane could accommodate three crew members and 92 to 120 passengers. Concorde could cruise at a speed of Mach 2.04, equivalent to 1,354 miles per hour, and reach a cruising altitude of 58,000 feet with its delta wing configuration and advanced afterburning jet engines. Compared to the typical subsonic takeoff speed of 186 miles per hour, Concorde's takeoff speed was 247 miles per hour. With this speed, Concorde could fly from Paris to Washington in just three and a half hours, and it only took around two and a half hours to fly from Paris to New York, whereas regular planes typically required over seven hours. Concorde's travel time set world records, with its ability to fly at 60,000 feet. It was almost able to take passengers to the edge of space. Some passengers even claimed to have seen the Earth's curvature while flying on Concorde. The plane's upper deck was occupied by the pilot and co-pilot, with a third crew member seated behind the pilot on the right. The plane featured an automated flight control system developed by Thales Avionics, formerly known as Sextant Avionique, and Bay Systems, previously Marconi. The passenger cabin on the plane could accommodate up to 100 passengers in each class. However, Concorde underwent interior upgrades to provide a luxurious experience, including adding 50 new passenger seats, 6 new cabin crew seats, a new gallery, and blue wave lighting features. 
Concorde was powered by four Rolls-Royce Snegma Olympus 593 turbojet engines equipped with thrust reversers providing 38,000 pounds of thrust with afterburners. Fuel injection and heating provided the extra power needed to take off and for transitioning from subsonic to supersonic flight. The plane also had two fuel tanks, one in the wings and one in the front and rear of the fuselage. Fuel from the tanks was transferred aft during the plane's acceleration from supersonic flight. This maintained the balance between the plane's center of gravity and the aerodynamic center of pressure. The fuel system also acted as a heat sink to maintain thermal stability. The fuel tanks featured new liners made of Kevlar Aramid rubber material developed by EADS France to minimize fuel leaks. Before being used on Concorde, this technology had already been proven in military helicopters applications. Concorde also had hydraulic landing gear operated by three-wheeled types. Initially, the plane used standard plane tires made of nylon ply. However, these were eventually replaced with lighter and puncture-resistant NZG near tires produced by Michelin Aviation Products. Besides its advanced technology and luxurious interior, Concorde had some unique features. One of them was that when flying at maximum speed, Concorde produced a thunderous sound known as a sonic boom. This sound was so loud that it could shatter windows in the houses below its flight path. Therefore, Concorde was only allowed to fly at maximum speed when it was over the Atlantic Ocean. If Concorde was still flying over land, it was required to travel at regular plane speeds around 600 kilometers per hour. Another unique feature was the plane's adjustable nose. The Concorde's nose could be tilted at angles from 12.5 to 30 degrees. At first glance, this may seem like just an accessory. However, pilots needed to lower the nose during landing to ensure it didn't obstruct their view of the runway below. With its advanced technology, creating the Concorde required a substantial amount of funding. The initial estimated cost of the program was 70 million pounds, which is approximately 88 million dollars.